All right, what is up everyone? Z-Man here at the Z-Channel. And today's topic, we're gonna to be talking about the fight or flight syndrome. And it's not necessarily a syndrome, but I'm calling it that because in most altercations that people get into if they haven't been in, you know, a bunch of situations, you know, they're looking at, well, let's talk about what fight or flight is first. First of all, what it is, is when you get into an altercation, one or two things is usually gonna happen if you haven't had training or experience okay and so usually what will happen is if someone like attacks you or gets in your face or a volatile situation you know develops a lot of times people will start to shut down physically sometimes emotionally and then also mentally like where your motor skills and, and your thought process and everything just kind of like stops you know and it doesn't go as normally in like a controlled setting like a lot of people can you know spar fight and spar train and and all that stuff and and they can have a lot of really great success in a controlled environment but when it's an uncontrolled environment and you don't know what's going to happen you know that's when you start you know running into the situations of the unknown and it's really hard to grasp what to do and so a lot of times you know it's really important to learn just like a few key skills and a few key things that you can always rely on you know uh, I had one of my teachers tell me one time he said it's better to know, you know, a few things really, really well than to know a whole lot of things just a little. And so, you know, that, that really plays big in the uh, security industry, being a bouncer, bodyguard, stuff like that. Uh, because in most cases, you're going to kind of deal with the same situations that you should be training on. And so fight or flight has a lot to do with your capability to, you know, understand that there's a situation awareness that you have to always have at all times and so f for example like whenever I would do like a, a bodyguard gig or bouncer or arm guard post or whatever the case is um, genuinely I always try to make sure that I go on site with a certain level of adrenaline o o already going through and I don't mean like you're jacked up and you know you know pumped up kind of stuff like that like you're mentally focused, you're on orange or even almost like borderline red alert because a vault situation could develop and you gotta be on your toes ready to go to handle it professionally and also upholding the law and make sure that you're not, you know, in any way putting yourself, uh, your company, your client, whatever the case is, you know, in, in any kind of uh, legal situations because, you know, anything that you do in this kind of industry is gonna be scrutinized and then some, you know, especially in today's society, I mean, everyone wants to just, you know, wreck everyone over the coals and, and, and uh, you know, Monday morning quarterback everything. And so you got to look at a lot of that stuff and think about, you know, or actually you really can't even think about it. You have, It's almost like breathing. You have to breathe in the situation. And, you know, so that is a lot of what I'm talking about right now is with the fight or flight thing, you, you really have to have enough repetitions and go through scenarios of being shocked like you need to actually go through scenarios where you're being surprise attacked and so like when I was training in like some of my um, my bodyguard stuff and then some like uh, you know when you have like multiple attackers and things like that what we would do is like we would have like seven or eight people you know in a row on, on both sides and as you would walk through with like your principal um, the person that you're protecting you know and a lot of times when we did this they would be like hey this is your girlfriend or your wife or your kid and you need to make sure that none of these guys hurt them but you don't know who's gonna do it and so secretly the instructor would go up and tell this person like hey when I call out your number you're gonna just you know jump out and they're not gonna know and so it could have been after you already walked past the person the person could be a couple rows up you don't know when they're gonna jump out it could be from your left your right your back your front it doesn't matter and as soon as that number was called you had to be ready to defend you know yourself and your family member or the person you love or your principal your client whatever and so that's how we were you know the training that I received in this in this and it was a lot of fun and it also woke you up to the realities of oh crap like if anything can happen anytime I gotta be ready to go and so it really uh, changes your fight-or-flight um, uh, mechanism is what is the best word. It's like a mechanism, and what you have to do, you have to be able to to switch that off, and you have to switch on your adrenaline and keep it always going to a situational 
um, awareness and alert status and be borderline red ready to go at all times. And I don't mean, like I said, like jumping around like some jacked up moron. I'm talking about you have to have controlled, you know, uh, understanding of what you're going to do. So, you know, for example, when we would walk the gauntlet and you never know what, what attacker was coming from where, you know, like everyone was armed with a knife or a gun or a bat or whatever the case. And when they would walk down the line, that's when, you know, they would call out the number and then all of a sudden, boom, someone's coming out with a knife. And right away you would affect, you know, a... A, a controlled knife disarm and then be ready to go and then in some cases you would have multiple attackers and one of the best ones that I went through was I had the attacker coming from the left side the, the left front side to, well the left front side <clears throat> and uh, I don't have a lot of room on this side so that's why I was going over here but from the left front side and so as he came in with the knife I grabbed down popped in the mouth went around grabbed his wrist took the knife out and then I could have easily cut the throat if I wanted to this is just training scenarios okay but at the same time there was an attacker coming from the right front side and they were gonna uh, hit my uh, principal with 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 a uh, with, with a bat or a club or whatever it was and so automatically this knife now became my weapon and I used it to defend my client with that and so when they came to strike down I cut at the wrist came across went underneath the elbow and then affected another type of disarm and then I as, as soon as I had him uh, squared away the first attacker um, you know at that point in time because I had already done the throat motion the instructor said that the person was you know dead basically and I was like okay cool and so I had effectively done it and that was like probably one of the funnest ones that I had done I, I had done ones with the guns and everything else and that's all you know really great training as well but the multiple attackers where you got one, two, possibly three people coming, you can't get a better experience than that. And so if you're in a training crew, you know, if you got a lot of people in your security company, whatever the case is, try to go through those kind of scenarios, you know, where you've got, like, where you're just walking along and, you know, there's some shady characters and you don't know which one's going to actually attack you. That's that's how you should be training. And so uh, that was actually Russian Sistema that, that was taught to me in. And so that was really cool. I had a lot of fun learning Sistema. Probably one of the... One of the coolest martial arts. It encompasses everything, and you know I'll definitely be doing a big full review about all all my martial arts. I keep talking about it, and I keep putting it off, but mostly it's just because there's so many other videos I got I got to do first. And you know, once we really jump into this stuff, you guys are gonna be like just blown away. It, it, it's so much fun. There's a lot of things to go over. But anyway, going back to the situational awareness, the fight or flight method. That was one of the ways that I learned how to control my breathing, my heart rate. Um, assessing the situation, breathing the situation, and by breathing, I mean like you're literally you're seeing where the dangers are. You're knowing what you're going to do before you have to do it. You're keeping your your principal safe at the same time, and then you're also you know effecting an escape route. The whole nine. Like you're thinking about like eight or nine different things at one time, and it's like breathing. Like you're literally, and boom. You know, as soon as someone comes with a knife, you you go in, and like you might not. It, it might be an unorthodox type of knife disarm. You might just, you know, grab and, you know, knock the guy flat down, whatever the case is, you know, and then in some cases it was just people trying to get a, you know, get an autograph. And so that's what they would do is they would give us different situations where, you know, it looked like the person was going to do something wrong, but really they were just, you know, like a happy fan, you know what I mean? So like, uh, you went from a person that wanted to stab your client to a person that wanted to, hey, I'm your biggest fan, I just need an autograph, and they would have a, you know, a piece of pen and, and a paper. You know, and, and so that, that's how it worked out. And so that was a lot of fun training that and, you know, going through that experience and getting used to a different mindset of, you know, it's shoot, don't shoot, attack, don't attack, defend, don't offend, uh, defend, don't defend. I mean, and, you know, it, it just really teaches you how to control that flight or flight switch. And eventually you can just keep it off. Because when you get to so many repetitions in the field, whether you're a door guy, a bodyguard, a security guard, you know, you get to the point where you're able to literally just keep your adrenaline switched on and you're ready to go. Like you're already thinking two or three steps ahead and you're assessing every situation. Like you're literally, you know, processing everything in, in a different mindset. You have to start thinking differently and you have to process things differently than you ever have before, you know. Um... I'll give you another example. One time when I was when I was a door guy, bouncer, um, I had a guy that was walking up and he walked up the whole way. It was about a good, you know, 65 yards from the parking lot. He parked in the back area, 
and he started walking up and he had his hand like this the whole time while he was walking up and so to anyone else looks like he's got a gun in his bag and so as soon as he got to the front door I was like I don't know about this you know and I, I, I felt really really weird I really did and as soon as he went to pull I just went in I snapped I grabbed him grabbed him by the by the chest the arm and everything and I made sure that he couldn't deploy whatever he was going to deploy from the back and I pinned him up against the door and I was like what do you got in your hands oh my god you know and then I put him over and I put him around the door or I mean I spun him around into the door and I pulled his back hand out and he was just reaching for his wallet now I literally almost took this guy out like I literally was like what the hell because just the his look his demeanor everything which goes to show you never judge a book by its cover you know and it was just one of those situations where it was like you know he walked up shady like he was gonna rob the place and it was like holy crap like this is really going down you know and so for me that was like it was an experience in itself because I was like whole you know th this it could have been worse I even told the guy I was like dude you don't just come walking up like that with you know like like you're gonna pull a freaking gun at the front door of a place where we're you know we got a bunch of money at you know what I mean and so like that for me was a big eye-opener in situational awareness and you know I remember the uh, the 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 lady that was doing the the, the cashier at the front she was like, I can't believe that I was like, I thought he had a gun too. And I was like, yeah, I know. It looked like he had a gun. And, you know, he was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't even think about it. And, you know, we, we made nice. I ended up buying the guy a beer. You know, it wasn't a big deal. Um, but it was one of those like, you know, holy crap. And even the manager, he was like, dude, like what, what happened? And I was like, I thought he had a gun. Like literally, I thought he had a gun. And, you know, he was like, you know, it was like, good job, but thank God you didn't hurt him. You know what I mean? Because if I would have hurt him. You know, I would have been under false pretenses on that, and I would have gotten in trouble, and you know, probably gotten sued and everything else. So it just goes to show you got to think before you do things. But then again, you never know, and you can't always, you know, go off the basis of, you know, are you absolutely sure this person isn't going to be a threat or a danger? You know what I mean? So think about that kind of stuff when you're getting into it. Um, you you really got to think about your liability before, during, and after any situation. And, you know, in that case, I already knew what my liability was. It was this guy might try to shoot us, and it's I'm the first and only line of defense because if he's coming in to shoot the club up, there's a problem. You know what I mean? And so there was already, uh, it was the, uh, what was it, the Pulse or one of those nightclubs that got shot up. I was like, you know, nah, -uh, not tonight, not on my watch, you know. And so they're like, he just, he had that look, you know, and I even told him, my dude, like, you look, you're getting ready to come up here and just rob the place or shoot us up or something like that and you know so like I said like we made nice I bought him a beer no big deal but it was it was a really good eye-opener and then you know another night I had a situation where you know the guy actually pulled a knife and I laid this guy out like I literally put him on the ground knocked him out that was in the discussion there was no if rhyme or reason about it you know he he literally ate pavement I think I probably nailed him about three or four times before he even knew what you know what happened and you know so that night I was really, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I was really nervous I was going to get in trouble because, you know, I laid him out really bad, but at the same time he had a knife and he was mad because he had been 86 before. And so it was one of the situations where it's like, you know, he was going to come up and like actually try to kill me and, and hurt whoever else he wanted to. And I remember he ended up, uh, getting away. I didn't detain him. Um, it was mo mo mainly because we went inside and locked the door and because at that point it was it was a threat and I don't want to stay outside you know dealing with the situation any longer because if he had a gun or anything else I wasn't trying to hear it it was hey we need to lock the front door down get inside boom you know and so that's what happened with that there was no other choice in the matter it was you know the safety of everyone else over me trying to like effect some kind of an arrest on on this you know stupid you know just some little gangbanger wannabe basically that thought he was you know uh wrongfully kicked out and it's like dude you got caught dealing drugs you can't come in here no more in a discussion you know and so um at the end of the day it was the smartest thing that i did you know defending myself first of all and i didn't overstep my bounds i mean i could have kept trashing the guy but he was already laid out you know what i mean and so um we you know we called the cops we did the whole nine and i don't know if he ever actually even got in trouble i never got any you know thing for 
you know, being a victim in court or anything like that. But um, I never saw him again, you know. And so that was like my, and I want to say that was like my second or third month, um, you know, being a bouncer at this one establishment. And so it was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I learned a lot. Crazy environment every night. It was something you know different. There was, you know, we would have uh, big brawls. We would have you know small little fights. There would be, you know, always some drunk guy that you had to deal with and. You got to follow like t Title Four liquor laws for Arizona, and you know there there's a lot of different things that happened. And for the most part, I really learned a lot about myself and about people and how to deal with situations. And it really helped my fight or flight uh, switch to be shut off all the time and always had a situational awareness. And that's what a lot of people need to do is they need to shut off the fight or flight part and get used to situational awareness. Like you should always be ready, alert and have a plan before you need a plan okay um you can't you can't just rely on natural instinct all the time like it does work sometimes but not all the time and so that's mostly the premise of this video is for people to realize that you know you got to train scenarios you have to train with people uh real quick story my buddy chris and i were training and he wanted to learn from me and i said okay um you know how do you respond under under duress and and and, and you know volatile situations? And he's like, oh yeah, I can handle anything. I'm like, okay, well, well let's find out. And so I was like, uh, I'm 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 the bad customer. I need you to get in my face and you know cuss me out. Tell me I got to leave property. Blah blah blah. Whatever the case is, and I'm gonna be you know a uh, a pain in your butt and not leave. And so he's up to me, nose to nose, yelling at me. And the whole time, I, I I just I just you know kind of like nonchalant put my hand behind my back, and then I pulled out a rubber knife and went right to his neck. And I'm like, now you're dead, you see? And like it scared the crap out of him. And he actually went home. He didn't want to train with me no more, because it scared the crap out of him. Because he thought I was actually going. You know, I was like, dude, like I would never hurt you. You're my training partner. But you know, and it was a rubber blade. It wasn't anything. You know, you couldn't cut anything with this thing, uh, even if you tried. And it just more kind of shocked him that he thought he was. You know so badass but he really wasn't and you know I wanted the same training too like where you have to learn how to back up from people you can't put yourself under duress or a situation where you're gonna possibly get hurt keep a safe distance from people because you never know okay and that was you know his biggest lesson that day was keep a safe distance situational awareness and he learned that his fight-or-flight um, you know wasn't really good because even if he had a fight or flight syndrome, I already had a knife to his, you know, a rubber knife to his throat and was like, here you go, now you're dead. Now what? You know? So that really uh, opened his eyes up and we did train more after that. He ended up moving back to uh, Arkansas, but, you know, he was he was a good buddy out here in Arizona and I wish him well. Chris, if you're watching, you know, uh, I hope you're still training out there, bro. But anyway, um, it's just one of those things that where it just goes to show that you, you can't just you know get into it with people and think oh I'm gonna be just fine you know you always gotta think about your safety the other people's safety the person that you're dealing with safety and then your liability before during and after and so fight or flight learn how to control it learn how to harness your adrenaline and learn about situational uh, awareness and always be at red alert borderline red alert so if you talk about orange I say if you're in my industry you know security bouncer bodyguard whatever you want to be right there at the line of red alert so always have that adrenaline kind of going through you be ready to go be processing everything that you see check out everyone you know uh measure people up and down figure out like if they're a threat or not and then always remember that anything can happen expect the unexpected you we've all heard that line before and you know just really think things through before you do them okay that's the best advice i can give um, you know, but you have to be able to process it like that. So when I say think before you do things, I mean, have a plan before you need a plan. And that's the honest God truth. You have to have a plan before you need a plan when you're under a volatile situation. So take that for what it's worth. And I'll be going over more material, material here real soon. Thanks for watching as always. The Z-Man the Z channel. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you soon.